So, is the Pareto Principle at the heart of the matter? How does it affect us individually? When I looked into it, I realized that 20% or maybe even less, 10% of my life decisions influenced 80% of my life outcomes. As a teen, I felt restless, a third culture kid trying to fit in, heavily influenced by both my grandparents being geographers and instilling that wonder and diversity of the world to be explored. So I applied to French universities and got into one. While being in France, several years later, I won a scholarship to do my master's research in an American university. It was a conscious decision. I wanted to do research in the United States. And it was a lovely experience. I'll tell you all about it in some other video. But then, while talking to a friend, an acquaintance really, and hearing from her about California being the golden land and so beautiful and so many opportunities out there in the Silicon Valley, I decided to apply for jobs in California. And that changed my life again. It changed my life completely because that's how I ended up meeting my future husband and then moving to Asia. But that's again for another video. So certain decisions in my life, a small amount of them really, and some of them may be fueled by serendipity or the love of diversity ended up influencing 80% of my life outcomes. Just to be systematic about it, I want to take the Pareto Principle through all five aspects of our lives. Physical, emotional, cognitive, socioeconomic, and spiritual. So let's discuss the physical aspect of our lives, which includes the overall health of our bodies, exercise, nutrition. Let's see if it applies to me or to you. 80% of muscle gain is built by 20% of my repetitive exercise. Yes, this one definitely applies to me. 20% of the foods I eat produce 80% of my energy. Again, a quick perusal of my plate tells me that it does apply indeed on an almost daily basis. Another one, 20% of my wardrobe is worn 80% of the time. Well, there's an exception here. In videos, it's actually worn 100% of the time. Okay, on to the emotional aspect of us. Think emotional intelligence, confidence, the way we regulate and process emotions. 20% of my experiences produce 80% of my happiness. Now, this one is worth pondering a bit longer. Let's go on to the next one. 20% of my IQ-related skills give 80% results. This is actually a realization I had recently. It's usually the communication and the negotiation skills. And in difficult situations, it's empathy that saves the day for me. 20% of our gestures and body language, also known as idiosyncrasies, account for 80% of the impression we make on other people. Idiosyncrasies, a difficult word. It means our genuine traits, peculiarities, our true authentic self, that meager 20%, a mere glimpse piercing through our body language, accounts for 80% of the impression we make on people. Seems like I spread out a bit too much by using six aspects of my personality in these videos, well, using the loudest six. Am I stretching the Pareto principle here? Furthermore, I'm not able to illustrate the 80% of my idiosyncrasies through these animated characters. Just basic lip sync. But then again, I only use one or two of those characters in each video. Pareto principle still applies in some way, I guess. Okay, on to the cognitive side of us. Reasoning, learning, system thinking, IQ, ideas, memory. Let me latch on to memory. The funny thing, human memory works in a Pareto-like manner. We only remember about 20% of our past thoroughly and the other 80% very roughly. So whatever I am sharing is mostly coming from the 20% I remember thoroughly. 
I'm terribly biased here. Okay, another one. 20% of my thoughts lead to 80% of ideas. Definitely true. 20% of the languages I know contribute to 80% of my income. This is another one which I wrote recently, which totally made sense to me. However, the most used language is different depending on the country where I am. In fact, I tried doing videos on YouTube in five different languages on one channel. It doesn't work. So I focus on one language that works, the language that most of the audience relates to, English. And to narrow it down further, we only employ the most basic and commonly used 3,000 words in a language. With these 3,000 words, we are able to understand 80% of a conversation. We can assume that, in most cases, context would be enough to understand the remaining 20%. Small changes in our language produce significant results, an estimated 80% or so. For example, whether we frame a situation as a problem or a challenge makes a big difference to the team. However, don't minimize the value of just changing one word while appealing to the team. It's all about the mindset, baby. That placebo effect. Oh, instead of saying problem, I say challenge and everything changes. The team is all of a sudden fully excited to take on the challenge when they were completely disinterested to solve the problem. It is not the word in itself. It is the mindset of the leader, the owner of this particular problem between speech marks that makes the difference. The mindset of the leader is the 20% which accounts for the 80% of the results by the team. I personally choose to believe a problem is a challenge to be tackled, an opportunity to learn, a life lesson for all of us. A life lesson in humility which is usually not so easy to digest, right? Okay, let me move on to the socioeconomic aspect which includes social status, finances, network of family and friends, and I'll focus on the latter, network of family and friends. So 20% of the people in my life represent 80% of my support system. 20% of people in my life consume 80% of my time. That's about right. Also, 20% of my friends produce 80% of my inspiration. I make sure these two are aligned. And the flip side of the coin, 20% of toxic people cause 80% of my distress. Moving on to the spiritual aspect. Think life goals, hope, inner balance. Okay, 20% of my decisions influence 80% of my future. That's why the inner observer and scientist in me are important to listen to. They subconsciously do these calculations while taking decisions. Of course, I have biases masking the Pareto principle and making decisions hard sometimes. And then one which is a lot more representative of the spiritual aspect, I guess, is meditation. And for me, I spend less than 20%, it's two hours out of 16, uh, maybe even less, roughly 12% of my time every day on meditation which produces 80% of my results. What results do people get after meditating? Somebody might wonder. It's the calm poise to deal with difficult relationships and situations during the day. The awareness of my failings, gaps and biases, especially while taking decisions. Meditation also gives me the necessary detachment or the observant attitude to see a challenge from different perspectives rather than a single one, the one I'm usually attached to. This is the heart of the matter, the attitude, the attitude towards life. As an afterthought, is Pareto here at work? What do you think? Please share in the comments below. In the next video, which I titled The Tip of the Iceberg, the artist will play devil's advocate. Can our life be reduced to the 80-20 rule.